Aussie Gamers, welcome to episode 40 of the Aussie Gamers Express podcast, the podcast that is investigating a missing can of mother. I am your host, Luke One, and joining me as usual is my good friend, Thorncliff. How are you, mate? I am good. Fantastic. And we all also have my other really good friend, Red. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, Carver. Good day, all. Fantastic for another week. How, uh, how should we start the show this week? There's some very sad, soft music. You want sad, soft music, do you? Because <laughs> you're mourning the loss of destiny. Oh yes, oh, I am very upset about that. And I'm, uh, I don't know, I don't know what to do. Like I am literally, I turn on my console and I look at it and I think, oh, what do I like? I don't want to play anything else. All of a sudden, Rambo looks appealing. <laughs> <laughs> no, not not quite. <laughs> oh my god! All right, well, look before we get into the the show let me just uh, run off the week's show in preview so first up we're going to have the news after our general discussion and in the news we've got stuff on uh, video game releases that are coming out next month in august we've got a gay station <laughs> gay! we've got some an atm hack there's uh there's a walking dead season three apparently coming games with gold as well as P- ps plus games some crytek information i think that's about it and maybe a little bit more but we'll see how we go the will be a a slight special feature this week and we're going to discuss what we want changed from the destiny beta and possibly what things we did like as well but that's uh that's going to be after the news then we'll do what's that sound and we'll bring the show home for another week okay uh who wants to tell us first about what they've been doing in the last week i'll start off go for it red once again just continuing on with uh my season on fifa I just I played a game today and you would have been proud I lost nine nil. Oh you lost? Yeah. Was it oh, an online game? <laughs> nah. Oh what? No, I cranked it up to the hardest difficulty to try and beat you. Oh, so well, I haven't played it in ages, so you probably no, have because I crack. started the, because I started the um campaign, if you will, or the season, I um can't change the difficulty. Oh, really? Yep. Wow, you used to be able to change the difficulty halfway through the match. Oh, I'm happy with it. I, I normally draw or lose by one or two goals, and sometimes I get up. I, I really don't mind. I just whack it on every now and again for a few minutes when I don't have extended hours of play to put into it with the PlayStation. Mm-hmm. How long are your matches? Eight minute halves. Eight minute halves, Wow. Yeah, so when you get to that 80-minute mark, you go, oh, shit, I've got an extra minute that I've allowed myself now. I might be able to come back. No, not from 9-0, mate. From 9-0? <laughs> who were you playing as and who did you play? Uh, Manchester City, and I played against Arsenal. Right. One cool thing I do know, just to go into a little bit of depth, it's not just the Barclays Premier League. You actually do got like, Euro League and Cups here, there, and everywhere. So it, it really keeps it kind of interesting. Really? Yeah, oh, for me, I, I don't mind my sports, mate. Yeah, but there's still essentially you're just still playing one team versus another, really. Diff- different specs, nothing changes. No, not at all. Yeah, essentially. Oh, well, you, you, the main character, the main players have got their own signature moves, don't they? Oh, a couple of them. Yeah, I've only and I've only just got into depth, um, really burrowing in trying to work out the controls because you can do some really specky shit. Hmm. Good stuff. Uh, followed on last night, I spent probably two hours on an online UFC championship because uh, I think I touched on it last week. You uh, EA hold tournaments every four or five days that are open for a twenty-four hour period, and you got oh, yeah. a, so I had a go of that and got a couple of important trophies, mind you. I'm very very happy with that. That game's got like seventeen silver trophies, four golds, and four bronzes. Oh wow! And a platinum, so that's very much worth it. Mm. Uh, Destiny beta, I. Uh, 
put about 14 hours into it, 15 hours into it. Not not nearly as much as you. I, every time I went to my friends list, Destiny, Beta, Earth Social, Luke won. No. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, you, do you know how many hours I put into it? Uh, only from your post today. Was it in excess of 25? Well, not quite. 23 hours. 23. There you go. Yeah, That's I knew, all right I, for seven I looked at days. It went, or... oh, nearly a whole day. <laughs> And the last but not least, uh, Sniper Elite. Oh. More multiplayer. Um, I started a campaign with our good friend Weeksy. Yeah. We're running through on a bit of an easier difficulty doing up a bit of a collectible pickup. Hello, Weeksy. Uh, <laughs> and you and I started a campaign on Authentic. Yes, we did. And I didn't let the team down. No, you didn't. You were actually really... I think we worked quite well together. Well, you got to push up, come back, push up, come back. Well, we didn't fail. Nah. <laughs> what else? <laughs> <laughs> Trust Sean to go uh, there. Well, yeah. I'm not going anywhere. So. You are. Licking the Just, tip of his thumb and rubbing uh, the tip. Yeah, rubbing my nipples. You are always the first person to go in the gutter. That's probably why I like you, but anyway. <laughs> but that, that was really a highlight of well, what, what, what is our short week. Uh, the highlight was that authentic run through first and second level, no deaths, no restarts because you, there's there as we said, there's no save point. You've got to start the level again, and some of those levels go for two, three hours. Well, they went for two or three hours on my own on the normal setting, and now we're playing it on authentic. So it's probably like we're going to have to set out probably three hours for one yep. level. What, I know there's one level there that probably might take three hours minimum. That's the next one, isn't it? The I one think... with, in the in the car, caravan, in the ravine and everything like that. You got to take yeah, the... the AA guns and whatnot. Yeah, that's yeah that one. That's I reckon that's going to be a very long one. But it's so intense, but so rewarding. Yeah, it's good. I, I love it. And we each have our own strengths. I push up, and you you're a dead eyed dick. Oh, I know. I had a, I had a good run. Hey, like because on the the authentic, you don't get any indication of where your bullet's going to go and you've got to take into consideration bullet drop you've got to take in wind uh and what else sound. yeah you've got to watch for the sound as well and you've got no hud that tells you that someone's suspicious of you yeah there's so they every... don't get the little yellow line uh, circle above their head that fills up to red you got you got to rely on all the sound cues yeah it's 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 pretty hard but yeah i, I managed to get a couple of good shots Away, uh, so. yeah, that, that's that's my that's my week. But uh, the most rewarding was uh, finishing that level without dying on authentic, and I do thank you for that. Yeah, tops, man, that was good fun. I'll um, look forward to playing the third level with you. We'll get to that. All right, uh, Sean, did you want to go next? Yes, we're just starting. Did you have a tornado last night, Red? Yes, <laughs> I told you. <laughs> Ten days from here. Yeah. Ten k's, yeah, round hill between Olsen and Bernie. Oh, okay, that's that's lucky. Um, S- still blowing a gale out there at the moment. Because yeah, you were a little bit late to the podcast. Sean was asking me if you were dead, and I said no, no, I heard from him today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I done a route of restarts just to make sure I had the bandwidth for this because it's been playing wreaking a little havoc. So if I do drop out, I do apologise. Your editing skills make it very, very yeah. unnoticeable. But yeah, we did. We did have a bloody mini tornado here in Burnie, you know. It didn't bother me. I just sat on the ground. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> I can help you own. The only thing that would piss you off would be it kept on blowing out your lighter so you couldn't spark your snake up. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just run around in circles with it. You have to go yeah. clockwise. <laughs> oh, dear. All right, Sean, tell us about your week. Um, Destiny beta. So... I played that with you guys. Yeah, you weren't too keen on that last week. Hold the phone. No. You actually did play multiplayer. Yes, I did. So tell yes. us. So tell us. I'm, I think I'm, I've am i changed my mind. Changed I, your mind. Yes. I I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was good. The moon, it, when they opened that up, I kind of, that kind of sold it. I went like, wow. Like, this is, you, you've got to play it with your cool. mates, eh? Hey? Yeah. Like it's it's good on your own, but I think that's where its strengths are when you go spelunking with your mates. Yeah, and when you you get just get dropped into a random fire team, like you don't know the person and you're not talking to them or anything. So well, you may as well be on your own. Yeah. With AI. 
Yeah, because they just run around and there's no teamwork involved or anything like that. And we found a couple of times where we were in like the open area, uh, was it like the free roam area, that you'd, yes. you'd find a, a chest and... Yeah, the uh, exploring. Are you on yeah. Earth, are you talking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And um, they just randomly run through and, and open the chests, whereas you had to wait for everybody to get close to it and then open it so everybody could get loot out of it. Yeah, because if you open the chest like a few seconds later or a few moments later, they disappear for everyone until mm. they respawn. Yeah, but... Oh. Well, we keep Other it up, oh, Yeah. <laughs> mm. uh, long day. Uh, next, I've been playing more of the Lego Marvel superheroes, so I think I'm about halfway through that at the moment. That's on the Vita. Is this uh, the third show in a row now that you've been playing that? Yeah. It's cool. You just sit down, you can play for like half an hour or so. So it's not like a game that I could sit down and play for four hours straight. It's something yeah. you've got half an hour <laughs> spare. I'll... Like you did with Doki Doki. <laughs> Jeez. After smoking your crack. Yeah, that's it. Mm. I don't think that, as I said in the previous podcast, I don't think that Cheech and John could get high enough to enjoy that game. Um. Next, I played Vessel, which was the free game oh, on yeah. PS3 this month. Uh, yep. It's a puzzle platformer. It's oh, I was enjoying it. I played it for about an hour and a half or so last night. Kind of lost track of time a bit, but which is good. It's um, yeah, side scrolling. You there's a lot of switches that need to be turned on in the right order, and you've got these things called seeds, mm. and you put them near a water source and they'll grow into like a little water guy and <laughs> they run and jump onto the switches. So there's certain parts where you need to have four switches on at one time to get for it to open up the, the gateways for you to go through and stuff. So you've got to feel like turn four seeds into these water guys and they go and jump on the, the switches for you to open it all up and then you can run through. So they help you press the switches so you can get through. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, so it's kind what, of like. So what is it like? A dude made of water. Yeah. Hmm. What does the water look like? Is it good? Yeah, it surprisingly, uh, it looks like they've put a lot of effort into it. Do you know? <laughs> run they through put the levels into the animation for jumping. No. Oh. <laughs> I remember you mentioned that when it first came out. But yeah, a lot of these side-scrolling games, they they. When they try to make water, they, it ends up looking like some sort of weird gel. Uh, Have you noticed that? Yeah. Mm. This is, is it, it's, it's, well, it's not going to like splash and spray, but it's, uh, it probably does look like a gel. But yeah. I think it looks pretty cool. Like, yeah, yeah, as you run through it and splash it around, it kind of, it's got good movement to it and stuff like that. It looks nice, so. Yeah, I had a quick go of it when it first came out, but only for a couple of minutes just to see what it was. Just to mm. highlight your, highlight your uh, comment there, Pixel Junk Shooter, that was like a gel, the water. Yeah, it was, It yeah. kind of fell in a mass. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, uh, well, this doesn't, as you like run through the the areas or tip it out and stuff, it does it does flow quite well. But, cool. Yeah, that's not really what the game's about, but... Yeah, so it's not, it's not really, I'm getting off track talking about what it's. I was curious. And uh, then I got the Curse of Naxxramas for Hearthstone, and mm. I was playing through that. And I didn't got it yet? I, I didn't know it came out. Yeah, so I started playing that. Uh, I got up to the first. Or the they they're opening it up weekly, so you'll get three bosses. I think it is per week for each of the, the different areas that they're going to open up. So we should but, mention, sorry, we should mention that's Hearthstone, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, for people, I said Hearthstone. Oh, you did? Sorry, I yeah. missed it. My bad. Yeah. Can you? Yeah, and... I'm going to go yeah. delete that out now so you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Make you look like a jackass. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, so... <laughs> now. Keep going. What I found is you really need to rebuild your your decks to get through it with one of the bosses it's like a, a spider boss and they have 45 health 
as opposed to 30, mm. and you've still only got 30. But every <laughs> every turn they have, if you've got cards on the on the table, they'll send this one in particular sends two cards automatically back to you. Oh, so the ones on your, your deck. deck? Yeah. Oh, sorry, the ones on the table. Yeah. If they're not charged or they're not something like that, there they automatically send two back every every turn. Mm-hmm. So you've got to use your block cards or mm, yes, so build build decks with like draw draw a card or look at the top three cards and pick one stuff like that there to try and build it up so as you can get your more powerful cards towards the end of your deck if I'm making sense. Yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, they, they're continually spawning small spiders, but most of their cards on the table are all like 1-1 one, one cards or 2-1 cards, so you've also got to build your deck, so you've got your cards in there that deal one damage to every opposing minion or yeah, something yeah. like that, so yeah, otherwise you just get annihilated, and <laughs> it, it's taken me a while, I still haven't beaten this guy yet, but come close, but... I'll have a go after the podcast and see how Now, you've go. put a fair bit of time into it, haven't you, Sean? Yeah. Is yeah. this the most strategic you've had to be with uh, your deck creation? Yes, it is. It's... You, you, you'd put a tick in the column for that being a good thing, yeah? Yeah, it is. It's, it really makes you think and go back and try and um, play for more cards as well, so just to make sure you've got the variety in your deck to be yeah. able to do it because like I, I went in there just with my um, normal hunter deck absolutely impossible I yeah. was I was killed before I think it was about five turns into it he had me dead and that's not usually <laughs> a game like that I play so yeah ah uh, good mm. cool uh, it's exciting that's good all right what else uh that was it that's it yes that is all right, I'll quickly run through what I've been doing. A couple of things double up with uh, with red. So yeah, as uh, we said, played Sniper Elite on the Authentic difficulty, and I'm I'm dying to play more of that. That's really good. I played 007 Legends on the PS3. I got that from Get Gaming as well. I played the first level, and it was funny. Uh, red asked me what I thought of it, and uh, I said to him, "Ah, oh, and this is just after playing the first level." I said, "This is 10 out of 10. This is brilliant. This is really good." <laughs> Two, two uh, levels later, I ripped it out of my PlayStation and chucked it in the envelope and sent it back. <laughs> I know how quickly your opinions change, Luke One. <laughs> now, no, it's it was a really good game and, and I, I thought it was well made. And for a game like that where you'd kind of expect it to, to be a little bit cheesy, it was well made. The thing that ruined it for me was the PS3. The load times were so frustrating Every time you would die, it would be like booting up the, the PlayStation from off again. It would take that long. It was crap. And it just got frustrating because you die, wait, die, wait. And you think, look, dying and losing health or whatever is not a punishment here. The loading times is the punishment. And, it, yeah, it just it got to the point where I went, you know what? I've got so many other games that I, I've got to play uh, like Transistor and things like that, I'm not going to put myself through playing this when I can just play something else that's going to be a lot more enjoyable. So I sent it back. So, But, yeah, look, if you've got patience, it's actually not a bad game. What was that, sorry? What's that? The what game? I'm talking about? Yeah. 007 Legends. It's a James oh. Bond game. Yeah. What it is, it's, it's really cool. I had no idea what it was about. And from the little bit that I played, basically it's a new story and you're playing as Daniel Craig as James Bond. But it, it brings... You don't like Daniel Craig? Uh, I prefer the older ones. Yeah, it's, uh, that's your thing. But uh, what it is, it's got all the, the, the legends, I guess, out in the title refers to all the uh, the enemies. So the first couple of levels that I played, I was uh, I saw Odd Job and Goldfinger. I was struggling, I was about to say gold member. <laughs> <laughs> I love gold. Uh, Everything yes. is gold. <laughs> so, yeah, you, they're, they're the first two guys that you see, and uh, I didn't really get any further than that, so probably they'd have stuff like Jaws, and uh, that's all I can think of off the top of my head. But I guess that's what the... the dude with the diamonds in his face? Maybe. That's from one of the newer ones, though. Yeah. So, 
I don't know. He was a bit gay, wasn't he? He looked a bit pretty with diamonds all through his face. Uh, I finished Wolfenstein The New Order. Last week I started playing it, and I said I wasn't really that into it. Might have been because I'd play, started playing it at such a late time in, at night. But uh, I finished it off, and I come to the conclusion that it's a really good and really solid first-person shooter. The story is is probably one of the best that I've played all year. And, yeah, the gameplay is is good. And there are a couple of shock and awe moments where you play it and you go, wow, they went there or, you know, like this is this is pretty sort of in-your-face stuff. It's, it's, it's a really good game. Um, I would probably, if I had to give it a number out of 10, I'd probably give it a, a high 8. And, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I, I played it on the easiest difficulty because I'm, I, I, I wasn't up for a challenge in that game. I wanted to play it for the experience and not for the, yes, I finished it on Uber or anything like that. So I experienced it and it didn't, I didn't get stuck anywhere because... I did play it on the easiest, and uh, and I enjoyed it for that, and it's it's quite good. I may take come back to it another day, and try on a higher difficulty, and maybe try the alternate, without spoiling anything. There are alternate ways that you can like paths you can take in the game, so I might come back to that another time. So no, it, it's a good game, solid game. I well, yep, co- crossing over again. Destiny Beta went to the moon with you, Sean. That was awesome. Uh, Getting up early in the morning and and punching through the moon level with you. We, um, and we a, a big shout out to Dano as well who, who yes. joined us. Yeah, good on so you, Dano. That he's, was he's cool. Was really cool. Yeah, he's a really nice, easy going bloke. I, that was the first time I I think it's the first time I spoke to him. Oh, I think we played a little bit of the Alpha. Yeah, him, didn't we? But yeah. yeah, look, and it was just easy to talk to that bloke. He's really cool. So good on you, Dano. Thanks for that. We'll play with you again. Uh, and yeah, it was just, just really good fun, and it was exciting having the moon, man. Just a new area. When I got on, and you said to me, you said something like, "Oh, the moon's open" or whatever. Yeah. I almost shit. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> boot that shit now!" And I was like, "Where's Red? Where's Red?" And I messaged Red, but I think Red was in bed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seven a.m. on Sunday mornings. Was it Sunday morning? Yeah, Sunday morning's yeah. probably not your thing, is it? <laughs> Nah, mate. No. <laughs> Granted, we were up till three playing Saturday night. We were, yeah. We'd only just gone to bed a few hours before, <laughs> but I didn't care. I got up and I played, and I played from seven a.m. I played it for a good two hours. So. Yeah, I did about just over an hour because I had to get my uni assignment completed. Yeah. So. Did you guys get that thing that you take across to the full version? Well. Uh, I don't, and this, I'm hoping this is correct. We won't. We didn't see it straight away. It's just something that's logged on the server, and then hopefully when you log into the full game, it'll probably pop up as a uh, like a little thing saying, "Hey, thanks for playing in our beta." Or blah blah blah. Here's your gift or whatever. Yep. So I don't know. I don't know if there's anything that we should know about, or if it didn't work or whatever. I don't know. It's the only time's going to tell. But I know I logged in. And I played and did what they asked. So hopefully we get that. But anyway, we'll talk more about uh, Destiny a little bit later in the show for the special feature. I started playing Transistor and I finished it. That's a strange game. If you've played Bastion, you probably will be familiar with the type of gameplay. It's very similar. It's that isometric style gameplay as well. And it has like a, a... narrator over the top and there was a couple of cool things like you might walk past something and the radar would would make a mention you'll go hey was that a terminal back there that just passed I was like oh so it was thank you mr narrator man i'll go back but um yeah it's it's okay i don't really like i actually had to uh look up the wikipedia page to find out what it was about after i finished it because <laughs> it just didn't really make much sense to me but the gameplay is fun and uh, I think I was trying to work it out, like thinking too much about it. It's actually a very simple story that you've probably you've probably seen or played in a game before, so it's nothing too amazing. But it's a, it's a very good art style in it, anyway. So, admittedly, you had us blabbering on in the chat party while you were playing it too. Yeah, that doesn't help if you're trying to follow a story and you're in a chat party. That's that's not always great. But I was never really sort of into it anyway, so I wasn't really fussed by it. 
But, uh, oh, and I started playing Assassin's Creed Liberation today on the Vita. I got that from Get Gaming. Oh, so nice. That's really impressive for a Vita game. Yeah. Some game developers need to pull their finger out of the ass and start making some decent AAA games on, on the Vita because I'm starting to get to the point where I, I don't really use my Vita much anymore because the games are shit. There's no draw, yeah. Yeah, but you play a game like this and, you know, it's amazing. Uh, like, it, it really feels like an Assassin's Creed game. And, like, you know, the controls are all identical and it works really well. And that uh, Aveline, I think her name is, yep. she's, she's shaping up to be quite a pretty cool character. And I've, I've only played maybe 45 minutes of it. I've finished the first sequence. And I, I, it's going really well. The Like, the fighting is exactly the same as the, one of the console versions, you know? Like, it's it's fluid and, and looks pretty impressive. You climb up the trees like you do in, in Assassin's Creed 3, you know, like you can jump in the forks of the trees and stuff, the branches. Yep. You can pull all that stuff off. It, it's, it really is a just a normal Assassin's Creed game. Like, it's impressive that they've managed to get that onto a, onto a Vita. So I'll keep playing that and, uh, and comment more on it uh, when I've finished it. But that, that pretty much brings me to the end of what I've been playing anyway, so... May, may I tag something on before we run into the news? You can do that if you like. I had the privilege of watching about three hours gameplay of Oddworld New and Tasty. Oh, yes. I, and I had a, probably about a 10-minute go myself just to have a feel and because we wanted to check it out what it would be like in 3D because the graphics are immaculate. Abe has never looked better, you know, and... Look, it just looks really pretty. It sounds really nice, and it works really well. None of the buttons have changed very much from PS1 or the PS3 if you download it from the store. Look, from what I've seen, everyone should, being if you're an Abe fan, get out, get about it, and enjoy it. Though you can be forgiven for waiting for it to drop from $30. I, I know the, the the quality of the game is there and probably the length as well. But when you're not going for a triple A title or a cheap indie one, you know, thirty bucks like with worms and everything right in the middle there, that that's just a little expensive. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a it's a re-release. It, oh. oh, it's a re. Yeah, I, there's there's been Pretty work. Much. It's worth thirty dollars. Put it that way. But I'm going to wait anyway because I'm a Jew. Yeah, same. <laughs> and I pick up Last of Us tomorrow. Well, hopefully tomorrow. Hell yeah. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, is it 1080p? Yep. Beautiful. Do, I mean, not that a game like that would benefit too much from it. Do you know the frame oh, rate? Oh, surprising. No, no, I mean benefit from the frame rate. Uh, yes. Is it, yes. Like, is it 60 or 30 or don't know? I don't know. I, look, I, I honestly don't know. I'll um, I'll find out later. No, no dramas. But uh, yeah, I'll get that eventually. Yeah, it works. It's really oh, good. Oh, and when you said 3D, do you mean 3D as in it's like a... Like a 3D game or no, 3D I just, TV? I, I just put my TV under 3D, but because the the level design has depth, but probably has about three layers of depth being background, uh, the ground you're actually on, but you can also like pop through your wormholes and come up. So um, it, a does, layer back. it doesn't have a 3D option. Setting. No, Setting. okay, but you not. can just chuck your telly on. And how does it work if you just do your TV? Very well. So if you just like it automatically uh, senses the the depth and works all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I, I've just got the an LG TV and I just got the 3D button and just whacked it on there. And we thought we'd have a look. It didn't strain the eyes. Like my eyes water anyway, but it didn't strain the eyes. It and enhanced it. If but once I found I found like I do with the other games. If I don't sit dead center, it gives me a headache because you start to see the layers. Yeah, but, but just for the the 20 minutes that we were watching it, it, it worked. And I just thought that needed noting because, mm. yeah, I, I, I just, I'm very impressed with it, to be honest. Nice. I've actually been watching quite a few videos on that this week and still, I really want to get it. But yeah, the, the price tag is that little bit too rich. Does it cross, does it go across to the Vita? No, it's got no. Um, that yeah. remote play, but, not uh, not cross play, cross buy. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah, it'd be awesome on the Vita. Yes, 
Hmm. All right, well, um, how about we move on to the news? Beautiful. Alright, first up in the news, I've got a bit of a list here. There's 19 games coming out in August, so next <laughs> month. We'll go through these. I haven't got, a, well, I've got exact dates, but I don't know how accurate they are, but I know most of these are actually coming out next month. But um, have you heard of a game called Metrico? No. That's a, that's a game coming out on the Vita. This is more of what I'm talking about. Like, what is that? There's, there's no advertising for it, and it's apparently a new release. So that's out next, that's early next month. Road Not Taken is coming out on the PS4. Have you even heard of that? No. Let me punch through a few of these. That's probably an indie title. Sacred 3, The Swapper, that's next month as well. Ultra Street Fighter 4, that's coming out on PS3, 360, and PC. We've got, I don't even know how to pronounce that, Disgaea, Disgaea. A, pro, uh, a Promise Revisited. That's on the Vita as well. Ho Hokum for the Vita and PS4. Risen 3 for the PS3 and the 360. Counter Spy. That's on PS4, PS3. That's all Sony's. Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare is coming to PlayStation. Oh, nice. That was cool because that was a an exclusive for Xbox. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it must have only been a, a short timed exclusive because it's coming out on Sony soon. Diablo 3 is next month. Yay, I've heard of that one. That's the Reaper mm -hmm. of Souls Ultimate Evil Edition that's coming out on pretty much everything. Yep. Uh, we've got... I uh, don't even know what that is. Lictum Battle Mage for PC. Dark Souls 2 DLC is coming out next month for those that are interested. Yeah, no, they always said they were going to release a full game and never have any DLC in any Dark Souls title. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no oh, shit. That's gone. Yep. Uh, infamous Second Son, First Light DLC. Ooh, excuse me, I just burped. Deal some First Light DLC is coming out next month. I saw that um, up for preload, so yep. it's, it's about $20. Uh, for yeah. something I'll get. I'll, I'll really look forward to to seeing what the story behind Fetch is. So. I'll get it eventually. Uh, what else have we got? Metro Redo. It's uh, digitally as Metro 2033 Redo and Metro Last Light Redo uh, for the Xbox One, PS4 and PC. So Metro's uh, being released. That's apparently next month, August 26th. And there's uh, Madden 15 and Professor Layton for the 3DS. Cool. Another one. Yeah. Another Professor Layton. Mm. I've never played any of them. What are they like? A, a cheesy kids sort of sleuth sort of thing, like a puzzly thing. Is that what they are? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, pretty much. He reminds me of Sherlock Holmes. That's what he looks like. I don't know if that's an assumption or whatever, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of games coming out next month. There's a couple of them. I've already paid for my uh, Diablo three, so just gotta wait for that in the mail. I paid for mine too because I sold my car just for games. Awesome. <laughs> Fucking who needs to drive when you're at home playing video games? Duh. I, I, I will not argue this point. <laughs> that's it. All right. Well, that's it for that one. What? Uh, who wants to go with the next news item? Uh, I'll go. The go. Walking Dead Season 3 has been confirmed by Telltale Games. Nice. I haven't even played the second season yet. No, I haven't either. I've played the first episode of the first season. Oh, is that all? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I've, no, I've played the first season, but just not the second. Yeah, I'm, wait, was, I'm waiting was, for the last episode to launch. Yeah, well, I was going to play it, and I, was, I just tried to play it on the PC, but then I thought, well, I'll get it on... Um, I'll put it on my Get Gaming list, so I'll play it on the PS3. So just Apparently the it's big really screen. bad. I've heard it's really bad on the PlayStation. Meaning... Like it's it's choppy, it's slow, and it's horrible. Look at the graphics for it, though. It looks like it's going to be choppy, horrible, and slow. What do you mean? It's just the way that it looks. 
That's no. the Borderlands styles graphics, isn't it? it? It's it's yeah, cell shaded stuff. It, That's it. I mean, but you got all the good words. It doesn't look very demanding, but apparently it just runs poor on the PlayStation. Oh, okay. I, I bought the season pass for the second season for about eight bucks, maybe about a month ago. But I'm just saving it until all five episodes come out before I actually play it. And run it on PC? No, no, I got it on the PS3. Oh, okay. It was on sale. And it runs terrible on the PS3, does it? So I've heard. I haven't tried it. I don't know. Oh, okay. It's just so. Did you play the first season on? Oh, PC. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Beautiful red. Ah, uh, my birthday month. Assassin's Creed Unity. It's been confirmed that it'll take about fifteen to twenty hours to complete the core campaign, as opposed to the other Assassin's Creed. It's only one single city, being Paris, being because we're doing the French Revolution, obviously. But it is pipped to last three times longer than the entire combined campaign of Black Flag. So. Well, 15 to 20 hours to complete, does that mean 100% it? Or to just go through the storyline straight through? Storyline straight through. Together with side missions and other little bits and pieces to get done, it's slated to have more than 100 hours of content. Oh, my oh. God. Nice. Bring it on. That's. Oh. I'm getting 200-plus-hour games in the next couple of months. Fuck. Very nice. When's so that in November? No, October 28th. October, October, man. You know, every other game in the for the year is coming out in October. You realise that? Yeah, well, yes. when you just said how many games are coming out in November and I, I'd barely heard of any of them, it's probably because they've all been delayed. <laughs> August, the ones I just mentioned. Sorry, yes, August. Yeah, August, yeah. yeah. I'm just going to say as well, did any of you see the video that Joshua Young posted last night with the oh, Assassin's yeah. Creed Unity. Oh, no. I got was a, all up in that. I, got a, I want to write a letter to the dickhead that posted that. And didn't Does make it, it available your for your phone? Yeah, what? Yeah. Why is that even an option to not allow mobile phones to play content? Yeah. What, what no is that? I'm, I'm like, oh, I've got to jump on the PC and, and have a look so, at it. For that yeah. reason, because I was on the lounge and I didn't have my computer I, when you posted that, I, I couldn't listen to it. Yeah, what is it? It's the Assassin's Creed Unity trailer with the original Tears for Fears version of Everybody Wants to Rule the World. Right. And it actually works. It does, doesn't it? And it sounds better, I think, than the Lordy version of it. So, mm. yeah. You've got to watch it. It's hilarious. I, I sat there laughing because it, it just worked so well. All right, how's your petition going for it? Uh, I should start it, hey? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Listen, mate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how are we traveling? Uh, uh, You're up, Luke. Moving yeah. on? All right. All right, so yes, a... Will you stop that dog orgy in your... Oh, jeez, it's annoying, isn't it? That's... <laughs> It's every week now. It's getting worse and worse. It's my it next It always happens is... about halfway through the show. They no, start. no, it doesn't happen halfway through the show. It happens every 30 minutes. Yeah. Yeah, and it's driving me insane because I'm the one living here. It's fucking annoying. It's a, like an Alaskan Malamute or a Husky or whatever that the next door neighbor has. It's just a pain in the ass dog. It, how, it cries and howls. And then every other dog surrounding me, including my own, starts to go off. It's... It's driving me nuts. Anyway. It's, we should get drunk and shave it. <laughs> <laughs> Give it something to cry about. <laughs> Good luck with that. All right, moving on to the news. Uh, there is a custom... This is just for you, Sean. There is a custom yeah. rainbow PS4 that's been created and it's been called the oh, Gay Station. The Gay Station. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's being auctioned during Sweden's Pride Week to benefit the Swedish gay, lesbian, bisexual and transgendered rights group, which are called RFSL. Uh, the current bidding is at 17,200 Swedish krona, whatever that is. <laughs> but it's a... It's a Seven I trust. I trust, I trust Google, but Google tells me it's 2,844 Australian dollars. Shit. So, yeah. It's, uh, so that's for Sean, is it? That's for Sean. I thought he would have got the PMT station because he barely touches it. The PMT. <laughs> and on the on the ad for the gay station, it's got hashtag this is for the gamers. But it's gamers. G A Y M E R S. <laughs> yes, it comes preloaded with AFL Live 2. 
Touche, man. Touché. Oh, yeah. yes. And, and Dragon Age. And Dragon Age. That's a fucking gay character. Dragon Age. <laughs> Bonus DLC Full, content. <laughs> fully gay console. That's the first fully gay console. It's got the rubber ball for the mouth. <laughs> Studded oh, leather. <laughs> I should have said it doesn't come in a box, it comes in fishnet sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> Well, well it doesn't come in a box. Because... Gay, lesbian. <laughs> oh, don't even go there with coming in a box. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to happen. I was going to say, it doesn't come in a box because it's gay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. This week's podcast is going to be flagged. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's why it's got the R18 or whatever it is on the um, the tags on the, on the episodes. Fantastic. I'm done. Move on. Uh, Pacific Rim was at <laughs> <laughs> no move on Sean we're finished yeah, with that yeah, yes. sorry yeah. go oh. <laughs> there was a, a Pacific Rim virtual reality experience at the San Diego Comic Con on the Oculus Rift so there's no plan at the moment for an actual game for it but they did a uh, what's it called like a, a tech demo with the Oculus Rift where you got to pilot the what are they called Jaeger Jaegers yeah and I believe I already watched it last night yeah go up against the kai, Kaijus is it Kaijus yep yeah yep so yeah that'll uh, they're just oh, they just showed it at the the Comic Con, and everybody's kind of gone. Well, we'd really like to see a cool game for this, but they said it's just a a promo thing, and they're working on the movie sequel for 2017. So now you see, that's what I think VR should be about—an experience, not a game. Because we used to go to a game arcade, and you could pay your ten bucks for a VR roller coaster ride. Yeah, yeah. Sort of thing, you know. Like maybe if you could get inside a. Jaeger or the robots from Pacific Rim and you'd have limited abilities as to which way you look or you could have a preset couple of things you could choose to do instead of actually trying to control every bit and piece of the game that'd be fun it'd be an experience yeah just doing that or like Godzilla or something where you get to go in and just destroy a city or yeah do something that you don't usually do all right, I've, over the last couple of weeks, I've been bringing concerning news about Crytek going under, not going under and everything. Well, they've actually had an official spokesperson spokes from the company come out and release somewhat of a statement. And they are blaming it on a transitional phase. And there has been communication with the employees and Crytek are going to run strong into the future and give every gamer what they deserve. <laughs> <laughs> so they don't look like they're going down the gurgler so they've claimed but it could be just a death rattle that's up to your opinion but it looks like games like Homefront the Revolution could still be sliding across our desks next year sometime I would assume so nice. hopefully let's fingers crossed because we don't like to see any game developer go under well I, I saw some listings for the new Homefront game today yeah, on so... websites so some people have got faith. <laughs> yeah, and that, that could also include Rise 2, because mm. they come out and said that it's been scrapped, Was that was complete rumour that it hasn't been scrapped. All right, Australian hackers have modded an ATM. Did you guys I happen to see this news anywhere? Yes, I did. They've managed to mod an ATM to run Doom using the original ATM's buttons. <laughs> How good would that be if you go up to take some money out and all of a sudden you're... Uh, you're destroying aliens on on some weird planet, blowing them up and stuff. That'd be really well, cool. Yeah, or somebody well, stealing your card details. Yes, <laughs> looking really over your shoulder. Five to six buttons. Well, it's they they apparently had a, a bit of trouble because the original game was made to I think it used control to shoot. Yeah. So they had to try and remap it using the the actual ATM because there's no control for an ATM because it, it the ATM runs like a version of Windows but it's all altered so because obviously if you have the access to the control button you can I don't, this is what the nerd was explaining you, you can like I don't know I'd just imagine control up delete or something like that you can get into 
bits you're not meant to. So that sort of thing was written out of the the programming or whatever. So that was a bit of a hurdle for him. But yeah, they I, obviously I don't know where they got an ATM from. I'd imagine it was a, a decommissioned one or whatever that they may have picked up. But yeah, they managed to uh, to get it running on it, and they got the speaker running too somehow. And it was pretty funny. But they're, and there are they're actually Australians that did it. So it probably wasn't decommissioned. They probably just drove away. <laughs> <laughs> now they've only surfaced now because it's taken ages to figure out the mapping and they're all reinforced now. <laughs> it's just a smash and grab <laughs> from Mount Druitt. But how cool. Yeah, no, that was interesting. All right. Might see Pac-Man. Maybe. Has anyone else got any more news? Um, I've got one. It's probably going to coincide with Reds, but I had the games with gold for this month. Oh, yeah. And you had the PlayStation's. Red? Yeah, mate. Yep. yep. So, Games with Gold for August was uh, Motocross Madness for the Xbox 360. That'll be available from the 1st to the 15th. And the 16th to the 31st, this is a big one. That's uh, They're getting Dishonored. Yeah. Hmm. So, and then available for the entire month on Xbox One will be Crimson Dragon and Strike Suit Zero, uh, the director's cut. So... Dishonored's a really good, really good deal for for the games with gold. So that's a you've played Dishonored, Luke. I don't like it. It's not. It's no. not. It's not my kind of game. I think that's the reason why I didn't like Thief or I don't like the look of Thief. It's yeah. It's very bad. Well, it's Bethesda, and yeah, that's what they they do. They, yeah. <laughs> it, no, like I mean the, the Skyrim and. All that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, it's just not my genre. You know what I mean? That's that's the original reason why I didn't really like that. Uh, was it the? Oh, what was that game that Weeksy got upset that I wasn't interested in? Was that the uh-huh. Order? Yes. Yeah, the Order. That's why I wasn't originally interested in that. But that, the actual gameplay of that looks really good though. So yeah, it but, does. Yeah, that that kind of. I don't even know what would you. What is that era? What is that? sort of setting colonial no what which one uh d- d- dishonored oh yes. dishonored uh no be some form of industrial wouldn't industrial it? yeah 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 i don't know i'm i'm just not interested in that it just doesn't do it for me you know i'm i'm big on sci-fi as i've said many times <laughs> you're not going to be big on anything other than destiny for about 10 12 months well yeah once that comes out fuck Forget it. So, yeah, well, they've actually been investing quite heavily into Destiny, and they've they've come out this week actually and said that their plans are to make it a ten-year IP. Yeah. So that's cool. Good. Yeah. Ten season passes are going to make another four hundred bucks out everyone. Well, yeah. that's it. That's right. <laughs> but worth it. it you, at the moment, you, you'd put down your money straight away on a season pass. Yeah, hundred percent. I will. Well, we'll venture there in a second, anyway. Yeah. With Best Destiny. Uh, right, rumoured, so you can blame Red if it's incorrect. Rumoured PlayStation Plus games, or leaked, if you will. Uh, PS4, Octodad. Octodad, nobody the suspects a thing. <laughs> and the Swapper. And this hasn't been crazy. released yet, has it? But that's not out until later that's where that that might come unstuck that rumor uh i've got it written here the swapper doesn't come out to oh it comes out on the fifth could be so could maybe yeah I maybe wrong. yeah ps3 saints row 4 <laughs> yeah that, i was waiting for it <laughs> and far cry 3 again uh blood dragon Blood Dragon. Oh, sorry. Oh. Thanks for fixing that. Yeah. Oh, Blood, Blood Dragon. Dragon. Cool. I don't have that. I'm no, me that. either. And on the Vita, 1001 Spikes. Oh, yeah. And you're going to have to probably correct me. At Atelier. At, 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 Atelier. Rorona. Plus. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of it. What's that? Uh, uh, sounds, sounds, sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> how's it spelled? A T E L I E R. Eight Liar. Eight Liar. <laughs> Rorona. R-O-R-O-N-A. It's the sequel of Seven Liar. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, it's only been... It's been leaked from a couple of websites. Oh, it's, it, it's it like could a... possibly be true. Oh, look, I wouldn't mind Blood Dragon. It's one of those oh, okay. Jap games. Like, what do they call them? J- JRPG or something? <laughs> yeah. 
That's what it looks like. But yeah. So that that finishes up my news. All right, sweet as. We'll see if that comes true. We'll know. Probably know by next week's show. I think. Oh, definitely. Let me have a look. Uh, yeah, we should know by next week's show, depending on when we actually record. We'll see how we go. All right. Well, uh, if that's the end of the news, I guess the only only next step would be a special feature. Is that right? Beautiful. Yes, it is. Let. All right, so this week we are going to do what we want changed from the Destiny beta, or what we want since we've played the beta now. So I've got a list here, and we'll, we'll run through this list and we'll just see what you guys think. First one I got on here, and this is probably my number one thing, is I want a trade system. So some sort of ability to either trade stuff with your mates, or even if it's just the ability to drop items instead of dismantling them. Yep. What do you reckon? Yeah. yeah, or a mail system. A mail? Well, that's yeah. how the World of Warcraft system works. Is that it's yeah, every like at the tower? There's a mailbox. Yeah. You go to the mailbox. You you click on it. It opens it up. You choose your friend out of the friends list, and then send them something. They come into game or log on to their companion app. Yeah. Open up their mailbox. There's a, a thing there for them. Uh-huh. And. What, what would you say to, like, a, a time delay, though? On? On the mail. Like, let's just say that they had a mailbox, but it took, a, like, I don't know, a couple of hours or a couple of days to get to them. No. No? No. Because I'm trying to think, because a trade system in the past, they've proved quite tricky and and can be abused. And Red, you and I discussed this uh, when we were playing Destiny the other day. Like, it could get to a point where, uh, like, people might get some some rare loot and try to sell it to people. As soon as you monetize it, you're going to run into yeah, yeah farmers. And they might, yeah, they might try to get like hacks well, and things like that to then try and sell the the top level loot to sell to people give us a hundred bucks for this or whatever. And then I think the, the biggest problem there is that uh, the, the, the the makers of Destiny, Bungie, they, I think they would be uh, wanting a piece of the pie. And then will they then start selling their own stuff? And then do you just buy items? And it becomes buy to win sort of thing. I don't know. Look, there's, there's many... Maybe, maybe only clan trade. Uh, yeah, look, that, limit it to, to people in your clan that you can trade stuff between. So, like, a, like a, on the website, you can put up a, a clan with a certain amount of people and maybe, yeah, only trade between them. Yeah. Or only be able to trade with people that are uh, on your friends list for a certain amount of time. I don't know. There's many different ways. It's that going they, to be hard to govern. That, that's the thing. And I, it's, it's, I'm saying that there's no trade involved in it, just send it to them out of the kindness of your heart well yeah but th- that still would uh, allow people to to abuse it so uh, it'd be interesting to see what they do if anything uh, they may leave it out altogether well all of the the PC RPGs especially in your World of Warcrafts and stuff like that they all come down to they you're able to trade complete characters complete accounts yeah. So, like, somebody can come to me and, and say, oh, I like the look of your level 90 hunter that you've got there. Uh, how much do you want for him? And I can go, oh, you know, I want 400 bucks. They pay it to me by PayPal. I transfer the character to their account. Oh, wow. You can do that, can you? Yep. Oh, yeah. It's big. Um, it's paid, paid tra- character transfer. So if somebody wants to buy a character off me, they it's, it's shunned upon by Blizzard that they do it. But it does – that's what – it cost. Well, it used to cost about twenty to twenty-five dollars to transfer a character to another account. Oh, okay. So yep. I don't know if that's gone up or not, 
but yeah, but there well, is big money out there. In, I guess in that way, focus, so it it is a deterrent. But then, if you're going to do it anyway, they get at least a piece of the pie. Yeah, yeah, because there was the age of the bloody bots, the farming bots, and everything like that. It became a real issue there for one while. I remember. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Look, it's it's a a thing for for Bungie, I guess, to work out. I'd, if it was going to take away from the integrity of the game, I'd say no. Yeah, I'd say just leave it. But yeah, I'd, not have anything in there. I, I would like there to be something between your Friend. your your friends. Something. I don't know how they would limit it that way, but I wouldn't because I don't want to get stuff off strangers. I don't care. But if you and I read uh, uh, doing some quests or whatever, and I pick up something for a Titan. I'm a warlock. You're a titan. He's a mad level, whatever thing. You have it. A la Diablo, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like we do in yeah, Diablo. That's what I was going to exactly. say. As with Diablo, just you know, like as it goes over, you can see what's there, and then you split it up amongst you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it's it's no biggie because M- uh, sorry, Diablo is not an MMO. But um, yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see. I'll be keen on that. All right, move on to the next one. I want vehicles that can fit your fire team in it. <laughs> now, yes. that would be cool. Now, I'm thinking Halo. I'm thinking something like a Warthog. Uh, something like that, like a big, cool vehicle that's uh, that's very uh, uh, Destiny sort of like. So, obviously... It's got like some, a big turret on the top or something that you can... so, Something in there that you can you can jump in with your mates and travel around rather than all travelling individually, you know? Sometimes it's a lot easier. And, yeah, if, if you can chuck a turret on the roof and somebody can man that and you can drive around and stuff, I I think that would be uh, quite good. I think they need to... The... three-seater sparrow. Even that? Triple like... sparrow. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, you, anything. You, anything you sit that... sit front and go, accelerate, brake, accelerate, brake. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my how, god! How funny! <laughs> how funny would it be if you had a like a big sparrow where, like, you had to share the controls? <laughs> Lucky. Someone got to control the camera while one was controlling the accelerator and the other one was turning. <laughs> that could be <laughs> havoc. But yeah, look at that. That's something that I, I would really appreciate. But yeah, an MPV, a multi-person vehicle. Yeah, yeah, that would be sick. All right. Uh, what about something quite simple as a map? Yeah, I've got that. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I would, I would love a map. I just want waypoints. There were so many times. Look, it's prob- probably is, and, and just a heads up to anyone listening. You know, all we've got to go off is the beta, and I understand that not everything would have been in the beta. So we're not sort of head up our asses thinking that they haven't done this. This is just sort of things that we've mentioned uh, that, that we'd like to mention. So a map with waypoints, because I found in the in the beta. There were several times where I wanted to get somewhere, but I couldn't really remember how to get there. And just being able to pinpoint it on a map with then a waypoint to get there would just just make life so much easier. First world problems, I guess. Mm. (laughs) All that credibility. (laughs) Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. (laughs) Even yeah, if Dinklage deploys it. Yes. Yes, deploy Dinklage. (laughs) As you map. Uh, what about access to your vault whilst on the planet? So while you're away from the tower. So being able to like ditch your stuff that you've been looting. So like if you run out of room to carry stuff, instead of having to go all the way back to the tower to get rid of it, so you can keep carrying, like picking up more loot, having somewhere that you can ditch stuff on the planet. Would that would that work? Do you reckon? Uh, well, it wouldn't work. work. It'd be used, but um, yeah. Well, I, did you ever become over encumbered? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Many times where I'd walk over things and it would give me like a red, like it would show the uh, the engram and it'd be red with a cross and it'd have a little note saying that your your inventory is full. Now I'm going to ask a silly question. Could you crush your items on the fly? Yes, you can. You can do that while you're on the planet. But yeah. that's essentially destroying it rather than storing it. Then store it. Yeah, I, I, I did. Look, it wouldn't be frowned upon. I'd use it <laughs> because that that almost you, you're trying to save time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's easy with one of my points. I had like teleport teleport points. You know, quick quick travel. 
Yeah, orbit so limited. Have, so you didn't have to go to orbit. You oh, can go. Back. Oh, you mean yeah. points as in locations? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. There needs to be some sort of fast travel. I think if the if they're going to be large maps, yeah, I think so. Because apparently the Earth that we've played, I think that's one of the smallest areas. In, yeah. In Destiny. Well, we're one of the smallest planets, so that's going to make a lot of, a lot of sense. Hmm. So yeah, that's that's another thing. What about proximity chat? Yeah, or well, you push to talk, as you said last night. Yeah, like, so let's say you're not in a party and you're just playing on your own. If you are questing with somebody, the ability to talk to the people that are near you, whether it be just, you know, because you're near them or if you've got to press a, a button on your controller or something, I don't know, uh, something like that, I think, would be would be handy rather than only having the, the four emotes, so the pointing, the dancing, the sitting, and whatever the other one is. Hey, if you can't mm-hmm. communicate with dance, then you don't deserve to communicate. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'd like. Some sort of proximity chat for me. How it work. What about double tap emotes? So if you press left, I can't remember what he does. Like you, Let's say that's the pointing one. If you double tap it, it does something else. Yeah, Chuck, with like, the other hand. Yeah, like more, more emotes. <laughs> Points with the other hand. I reckon that, that would be all right. I want oh, more a, than one dancing style. Yeah, another dance, another another few moves. Maybe to okay. do the uh, the you know the worm or something like that. Mm. <laughs> the macarena. Because the awoken <laughs> dance moves are just absolutely terrible. Oh, they're all right. Uh, <laughs> are they? Oh. Wait, do the different species have different dances? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I but didn't you, even notice. You, you did the robot because yeah. you were a robot. Titan. Oh, I don't know. I yeah. didn't even pay that much the attention. The awoken to... had this weird like really wavy arm Woo-hoo, just a lot yeah, yeah. <laughs> look at me yeah and the and the white human guys just stood in the corner kicking their feet <laughs> just swaying from side to side white man can't yeah. dance yeah so PC tonight mm. all right here's here's a here's a big one that I think was uh was going pretty strong on the internet sparrow races yeah yes yeah, I and I want it to be actual governed races where it's like there's a start line and stuff. That would be cool. Not just like ad lib ones that you just make up with your mates. A proper, proper pod race. Race. <laughs> That'd be yeah, like pod racing. Mm. And but like and have that as a way to earn glimmer. I reckon that would be cool. Yeah, or bet against people. You know, open up some form of wager. Yeah, that'd That's be what, right. that, that was one of my points. Like have wager events. Like challenge yourself because like. We got the invitation from you to join the clan, and yep. went in there and had assorted leaderboards and who's got this and who's done that and whatnot. Like you could have certain wages and stuff like that, which, which is going to bring into it's going to take you away from the game a little bit. But you're going to be spending that much time in Destiny by the looks of things. I know I'm going to be. I, you're going to spend more than anyone, uh, probably other than Reprimere. <laughs> But just something to break away from it, you know, game, no, just to throw a couple of ideas out there, like a game of cards or a shoot target practice, like you said, shooting range sort of thing, you know, just some wager things that add a little bit of competitiveness that isn't a crucible, because I don't feel I'm going to spend a whole lot of time in there. Yeah, I can't see well, myself. We tried to get in there. Yeah, it didn't work that day, did it? much lag. We, we couldn't even get through the menu. Yeah, I had too much lag when I got in there. I had, like, headshots and stuff and lined them up, and it just wasn't happening. It was, like, sniper elite all over again. Hmm. All right, uh, next, what about, like, you sort of touched on it because we've discussed it in the past or when we were chatting on party, but uh, some sort of shooting range or ability to shoot whilst you're on the tower. That's so, what I was thinking. Yeah, like, so if you go and buy a new weapon, so you don't have to go all the way down... Um, onto a, a level or a planet or whatever to try it out. You can try it out and see if you want to keep it or if you want to go and buy something else. You can't even draw your weapon on the tower. No, no. It's That's supposed to shoot people in the face that I don't like. <laughs> yeah, they, they need that. I think they need to open up an actual shooting range that once you walk in, your your armour will, will come on and then yep. you can shoot like uh, some bots or whatever that are inside. That would be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. be really good. Or an obstacle course, if you will. Yeah, yeah, like the like in um, 
Modern Warfare, the original one at the beginning, where you could go through yeah, and the yeah. tutorial. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, like a little tutorial thing. Yeah, that'd be that'd be quite cool, I think. Um, what about this? It's a small thing, a small detail, which I think they might bring in a rotatable character when you're customising it, when you're um, chucking on new equipment, or or even when you're you're building a character at the very beginning. Mm. The ability to rotate them and have a look closer at the the detail that you're putting on it, because they're, they're actually quite detailed character models. But you don't really get the chance to you have get a more detail look at looking at it on the app than you do in the game. Yes, that's. Yes. that's so what I think I that might be just a beta thing. That's... I think so too. So that's what I mean. I think yeah. that might be something that will come. But like when you're putting on the the new gloves or whatever, there's a close up of the arm, but I want to be able to turn around and move that and have a good look. <clears throat> so that's another thing uh, what about what, anything else that you guys could think of an audio setting in the settings menu where you could like turn yeah. the sound effects up and down or the music up and down yeah because as you noticed it, it didn't have that and no. I, th I think that that's another thing that I think is beta related they don't yeah. have all the settings in there they left them out to just for, for ease but yeah I think, I think they should get that and if they don't that's something they definitely need to do and just some sort of audio settings. Uh, what else? What else can we think of on the fly? Not, not, not a lot. Yeah, it was. It's a pretty sound beta. Like I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was very surprising, you know. Like you guys have got a, a bigger background in PC gaming and, than me, and you've had your fair share of betas and everything like this. But this was my first real alpha slash beta run at a game, and if it's only as you say, it's only the beta. How much better is this game really going to be? Yeah, it's, I've got high hopes for it because, yeah, that's. I was very impressed with the we, beta. We all, we all scoffed at the $500 million mark when Thorncliff, well, Sean, when you brought it up in the, the news that time, it's like $500 million being spent on Destiny. And we we're going, oh, fuck, whoa. You can start to see where the money's gone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, they've definitely it's, taken their time. And kudos. Well done. I'm well impressed. Hmm. Yeah, but look, that, that's that's basically my list of things that I've, I've put down that I, I want to see. But I've got high hopes for it, and I I just can't wait. Oh, here, how about this? How about how about the ability to jump from a planet straight into the tower, uh, straight to the tower instead of going to the map, or using your dropship to go from a planet to a planet? That might come. I would hope that that it does. Yeah. Or from a planet straight to a like a uh, a mission, like not a mission, uh, like the campaign. Yeah. So rather than going back to that map screen in orbit to then back down to Earth, because if you're on Earth, why leave Earth to come back into a mission? Yeah. Anyway. Oh, one thing you also said the f the feel of different gravities. Yes, that's. Did you notice that, Sean? That when we're on the moon, yeah. the gravity didn't change. Yeah. So yeah, because that's the first thing we said. How come we're not jumping twice as high on the moon as we were? That's right. Yeah, yeah, we did talk about it. So I don't know if they've got an explanation for that in the codex that you know our what we're wearing changes that and makes it all the same. But I, I would prefer that on the moon that you had it. You had more jump. <laughs> Even if it was an extra twenty percent. Yeah, like it doesn't have to um, to go stupid because obviously it'll be too hard to keep you within the confines of the map. But um... and one thing I tried to always do in the beta every time without fail, I never succeeded. Is when you leave orbit and you're going down to Earth. I, I just wish you could control your ship and do a barrel roll. <laughs> <laughs> What are you, Star Fox? <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah. wanted, just wanted to control my ship because you spent all this money on it and all you do is look at it. How, how's this for a solution for the moon? Come up with some explanation that if you're outside in the moon, on the moon, your jetpack doesn't work. Yeah, cool. But you can still jump the same height because you're on the moon. Single motion, yeah. Yeah, as oh. opposed to double tapping it. Yeah. So that would that would solve it. So obviously you would lose that ability to like if you jump off a cliff you can't hit your jetpack thing to slow you down. Not yeah. that it matters because you don't get fall damage anyway. But yeah, I think I think that would be a way around giving you extra jump 
just give you the same jump but explain it somehow that for some reason outside on the moon your jetpacky thing doesn't work but it becomes hell yeah and you keep going well that's it uh say it doesn't function or whatever for that reason or it's a safety thing or i don't know whatever anything but it will work inside the buildings or in the caves yeah and one thing I would like to see, uh, you said spitballing here on the fly, going between different um, positions or different planets or galaxies or whatever, you, you had the um, opportunity every now and again of running into some trouble while in your ship. Okay, like a flying part? Yeah, where, you, where you're piloting your ship, like whether it be through debris or collecting something or whatever. Well, they got $500 million. Yeah, that, that'd be cool. Get I, at it. I do like the ships, and at the moment, yeah, you're spending what four thousand of glimmer on it just to look at it. Yep, there yeah. are cheaper ones, mind you, because I spent uh, two and a half on mine. Yeah, but I want the stealth bomber. Yeah. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, um, anything else to to say about Destiny? Oh, uh, oh one thing that I really, really did like was that when you did your double jump with your your jetpack on you could still aim and shoot quite well yep yeah the only thing is as soon as you aim though you they they turn off what turns off your jetpacky thing yeah but you're still up in the air and yeah yeah, you're able to aim pretty well you can yeah you're right which was really cool i did that a few times but yeah it shuts off though so you start to fall quickly but you can reinitiate it if you did if you don't use your complete boost like i used to jump hit me hit my boost button then hit it again and then I'd, I'd start to glide and then I'd hit it again and I'd go a bit further. You could turn it on and off like it, yeah. just, it had yeah. a predetermined amount of boost, if you will. But yeah, I'd always jump to the peak of my jump and then just fire down below, rain the shit down. Hmm. Nice. All right, well, uh, that's it for, for that. The Destiny Beta will move on to What's That Sound? So last week's What's That Sound, we didn't have, well, it's early days, so it's still going to run for a couple of days yet. Obviously, it's a little bit of a weird thing that that, uh, that works with podcasts and the day that we record it. But uh, at this point in time, there's no winner. But we did get a, a reply from Mitch Sniddle Sumner. He had a go. He was incorrect, but I gave him a game anyway. Yeah, well done. Why not? He had a go. He thought it was the dig, uh, that game called Dig Dug, level one. That's incorrect. The actual correct answer was Super Mario Brothers 3. It was the music uh, from Second level note. 2. That's right. I was looking at my notes, but I haven't written it down. But it's from level 2 of Super Mario Brothers 3. It's the athletic theme is what it's called. So that's uh, that's that one. Yeah. Good game. Good game. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was a, a great game for the SNES back in the day. All right, now this week it's not music. It is a, a quote from a video game. It's quite a quite an awkward quote. It, there's a, there's a lot more to this speech, and I never really picked up on it. I was a much, much younger person when I played through this the first time. But uh, hint, hint. In uh, in listening listening to it uh, this time round, I'm like, geez, that's some weird shit to say. Have a listen to this little snippet anyway of a speech for a, a female character. I only get off my bike. When I fall in love, or fall dead. Did you hear that okay? Yeah. I only get off my bike when I fall in love, or I fall dead. (laughs) So romantic. (laughs) 
Paper boy? <laughs> well, in the air. <laughs> Paper girl. I only get off my bike when I fall in love or fall dead. Mm, I don't know. It's gonna hazard, I guess. But, um, there's some music in the background that. Oh, don't, no, don't pay any attention to the music in the background. No? No, that'll probably throw you off. Throw you off. Look, it sounds... Come on, have a guess. Mm. Twisted metal. No. Uh, I don't know, when you were younger, go... Yes. Yes. <laughs> Where did you do that? You haven't oh, done it for off. <laughs> You do this quite randomly, but you do. Do you it even know which one, though? You wouldn't um, have a clue. Narrows it down. Although there's not too many of them. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. It's Sean's intelligence, it's his ability to just work out from clues and things like that. He doesn't know anything about video games. <laughs> well done. Yes, all right. Well, look, if you think you know what that sound is, then send us a message to the Facebook page. Uh, just tell us, uh, I think this week's sound is this from this. And if you're correct, I'll send you a game. And uh, if it's a funny answer, I'll also send you a game. Give it a go. All right. Well, that's, uh, that's it. That's our show. We're finished. That's episode 40. That's a bit of a milestone, don't you reckon? Oh. Yeah. Closing in on 1,600 likes, too. Yeah, that's right. Well, look, before over we do... The, over the hill now. <laughs> before we do finish this week's show, uh, I, I didn't really write this into it, but it's uh, it's something that I did want to mention, uh, that just this week on, I listened to uh, what's uh, I now know to be the final episode of the Chomp on This Gaming podcast, which is, you know, I've been listening to Zach and, and Gary Ellis and things like that for many years now. I think I, I first started listening to them with uh, the Xbox Achievers podcast that they did back in, I think, 2011, 2012, I think it was. Might have been even earlier. I'm not sure. But I listened to them. They did went through another change, went into our Xbox world, and now they do... Uh, chomp on this gaming and I've, I've just enjoyed listening to them they've finished up that was their last episode for this week um and uh they'll be uh, moving on to some different things in the gaming area but i and i just wanted to to make a mention that uh, just a thank you to uh to zach and the cotg crew in that last show they they made a few uh, a bit of a, a mention to us, to Aussie gamers, and and the hard work that we put into a show every week, and basically handed over the reins to us and said, look, um, anybody that listens to them, now that their show's finished, to come and have a listen to us. I just wanted to say thank you very much, and thanks a lot for your kind words, but also thank you very much for all of the uh, the, the great episodes of your podcast that you guys put out. They were up to about 80-something episodes, I think, of just COTG. Yeah, yeah it was great. I used to, to listen to it quite often. It used to get me through the early morning starts that I used to do. So Yeah. So yeah. I must say I'm disappointed because that's my podcast. That's what I listen to. I mean, I know I make a podcast, but... That's the show that I listen to every week. That's what I listen to when I mow the lawn every week. What I when I'm washing my car or you know when I'm doing stuff. That's that's what I listen to or when I'm driving to work things like that. So that's gone now. Um, but uh, anyway, time to, to to move on. They'll be doing a lot of um, so Twitch stuff, YouTube stuff. So I'll I'll still be following uh, Zach and and the guys from there and depending on what they do and. And uh, and I'll post some of it on the on our Facebook page as well to uh, to help them out. But uh, yeah, just they just said some really wonderful words. Uh, what I'll do is I'll actually play at the very end of this show once we're done the, a little snippet from what uh, what Zach said about us because I, I just really appreciate it. So mm. so we're, we're going to have a lot of new Canadian listeners next week. So uh, we'll have to talk slower. What? <laughs> hey. I get the dick yeah. the Canadian. Why, yeah. why Canadians? Well, they've got fake Canadian on the show. Well, yeah. yeah. And we're going to have, have new American listeners as well, so we'll have to talk even slower. <laughs> a. a. Yeah. We've got new people listening to the show. Why don't you insult them? Yes. 
Hey. Welcome well, to we, we might have to put we might have to put in a, a, a lingo thing at the start of the show. Sure, and this well. might be the first episode they listen to. Yeah, <laughs> you're well, a dickhead. Sure, the, the Aussie gamers does not endorse anything that this idiot says. Good day, mate. <laughs> so I said we need to have a lingo thing at the start of the show so they understand what we're saying. We don't we don't really use any lingo, do we? We might. He calls everybody cobber at the start of the show. Well, yeah. Do you know what a cobber is? Yeah. What is it? It's like a mate. Yeah, but there's got to be something behind it. I obviously know the context of it. But where does it originate from? Red, you use the word. You should know. Chocolate-coated caramel lollies. (laughs) 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 I, Knowing you as well as I think I know you, that's that's probably why you say it. Because I just want to dip it all in chocolate. <laughs> gay station. Why a gay station? <laughs> I was just looking at that on Facebook. He's already getting some love. <laughs> oh, dear. So if we do have some extra listeners this weekend and in the coming weeks uh, from uh, the COTG cast, thank you and welcome aboard. And you can be honorary Aussie gamers uh, every week with us. Uh, and you are definitely welcome. And thank you very much for coming across. So, we're finished for this week, so why not take this opportunity to head over to our Facebook page and give the Aussie Gamers page a like. Just type in www.facebook.com slash Aussie Gamers. That's A-U-S-S-I-E-G-A-M-E-R-S 2012. That's not Gamers, (laughs) G-A-Y-M-E-R-S. It's not. G-A-M-E-R-S. That's correct. Uh, (laughs) Typing in G-A-Y-M-E-R-S, that'll go to Sean's personal page. But simply by liking our page, (laughs) we'll be helping support what we're doing for the Australian gaming community. And while you're at it, subscribe to our podcast using iTunes, Stitcher, or TuneIn Radio. And you can uh, just search for Aussie Gamers Express. If you like Twitter, you can look for us on at AussieGamers12. Twitch, we use uh, the handle AussieGamersTV. And we also have a PO Box, which is uh, PO Box 130, Cranebrook, New South Wales 2749. Guess what's uh, happening next week? Um... One other time. Last of Us. Well, no, that's tomorrow, but we'll probably will be talking about that next week. That's true. But next week we'll be doing number two, Rapid Fire Quiz. That's correct. Yeah. Bing. <laughs> so yes, our second Rapid Fire Quiz will be next week. Uh-huh. So uh, give you better um, polish up on polish up. That's a good word. I couldn't think of a word then. Polish up on your gaming general knowledge. Beautiful. Okay, the, the questions already exist, so I can tell you now that I've gone for an easier approach. Some of them are a little bit hard, but most of the questions are a bit easier. It's just you've got to get in quick and answer correctly. <laughs> All right, so um, I'll bring uh, I'll bring uh, Repremier on board again, so there's three of you, and you guys can battle it out. Although not that he was much chopped last time. No, even I beat him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, give us, give us one. <laughs> uh, nobody knows what that sound is. I think that might be one of his mating calls. Oh, yes, it's one of those sounds from where he's pushed forward and then pushed back and <laughs> had, had you covered over his shoulder. Well, you're yeah. the one talking about the rapid fire quiz using words like polish and hard. Yes. Yes. All right. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. Uh, I've been Luke One. Who have you guys been? (laughs) And these are the days of our lives. (laughs) Red. You've been Red. And Thorn Cliff. All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening. We'll talk to you again. We'll talk at you next week. Cheers. Bye. Bye. If you guys out there are really just super bummed about not having a podcast to listen to. I will say this much because I feel that it would be totally wrong of me if I didn't at least do this. We have some friends, some friends in another place, place down under hell. No, no. I was waiting for somebody to make that joke. Mexico. There's a place with kangaroos and boxing clubs. Definitely oh, not Mexico. Oh, New oh. Zealand. New Zealand. <laughs> we have our friends, Hook One, 
Yeah, hey, runs the uh, Aussie Gamers podcast. As you guys know, we are networked to them. They have promoted our stuff on their on their Facebook page. For obviously, they do a Facebook page and a podcast. And I will tell you this: if you don't believe me that you can't just coast in a podcast, go ask Luke one, and he will tell you how much work he puts into his. Because I know how much work he puts into his. You listen to his shows, and you can just tell like that man is a man of post production. And I'll be honest with you guys, if you really want a podcast on a weekly schedule where someone's going to entertain you, check them out. Do you know why I'm willing to endorse them? Because not only are they our friends, everyone over there at Aussie Gamers, not only are they our friends, but when they were, when they tried the whole website thing, didn't work out for them. But there was a spot on that website that, you know, paid a little respect to us, jump on this gaming. And Luke had written in there that, you know, part of the reasons why I even got into the market was because of me. It followed my career in all of this nonsense. And I'll be honest with you, Luke, because I know you're listening. The reins are yours, my friend. This is all you. I want everyone to go and check out the Aussie Gamers podcast, and I will put them and their link to all their stuff in the Facebook page. Now, I won't say this much. I'm not going to promise that you're going to like their stuff. I'm not saying it's bad, but they are a group of people who try every week to deliver a high-quality podcast. And if you're going to try anything outside of us, let make them be first. Let them be first. Because they've earned it. Because if you want a podcast where you have people who work really hard to build a really good product, check out their podcast. Check out their Facebook page. I mean, Jesus Christ! I think they post on Facebook more than I tweet during a Miami Heat basketball game. And that's a lot. And they do a really nice job with their community. So I'm passing my reins and everything I know over to them. I want you guys to check their stuff out. And if you enjoy it, make sure you leave them a five-star review. Because they deserve for the work that they put in. But I'm not saying I want you guys to abandon us either. I'm just saying, hey, you got them on the podcast over there. Make sure you check out what we're doing, though, on the bigger stage as well. Because I honestly think you guys Sometimes will really enjoy all what we have in the world. Just don't here. come true. Because, me personally. I believe, I believe, I believe.